All right, here's another episode of Writing and Reading in a DeLorean, and today we are coming from StellarCon in Maryland. And I found this poor sap who is willing to get in the car um, yeah. and talk about his books. So go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us why we should read a book that was a big waste of our time. <laughs> and I think you should probably follow up why I said that so people don't think you're a waste of your time. <laughs> tell everybody uh, you know, why they shouldn't read these books. I'll give you all of the reasons. I am author Harry Carpenter, uh, based out of Maryland. Uh, I do horror, science fiction, serial killer stuff, uh, like long walks on the beach, yes. uh, puppies, ice cream, and uh, I'm an Aries. Those are all great uh, <laughs> Match.com profile <laughs> points. <laughs> so, all kidding aside, that was literally on my dating profile years ago. It was like, I like long walks on the beach, puppies, and I was like, I'm just going to be stupid. <laughs> Love it. So, uh, your favorite your favorite one-star review. We were talking about that earlier. Oh, dude. So, my favorite thing is, yeah, as an author, you know, we get uh, we get some fun reviews that are just like, you know, genuine one-star, didn't, didn't feel it, didn't like it, wasn't mm -hmm. my content, wasn't my material. But sometimes you get some stuff out of left field, and one of them said, this, this book was trash, and that's being polite. That's being polite. <laughs> being polite is, well, the book didn't really resonate with me. That's being polite. <laughs> Your book is trash. It, well, that, that's one of those things like you preface it with no offense. Maybe it was yeah, supposed to be a five-star yeah, review yeah. written by Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> you never know. You'd think. You never know. You'd think. Yeah. All right, so what do you got going on here? So yeah. I, got a, I got a couple of, couple yeah. of books. So you Show them up to the camera. Camera yeah. over that way. So I got this one. This might be my favorite if you can, if I don't have my fingers that in the way. And that is called? This is Memoirs of a Crazed Mind. Ooh, what's it say on the back? Uh, how fragile How fragile is the human mind? I, my favorite thing about this book is people are like, you know how like they grab the book and they want to read the back? Sure. You know, the blurb, they, read, yeah. they read the greatest, you know, little Stephen King blurb or mm -hmm. something. They're like, oh, this is about The Shining. Mm -hmm. Cool. They pull mine up. How fragile is the human mind? They look at me like, what the hell? I'm like, <laughs> so I always tell everybody, there's nothing to it right now. When you finish the book, it makes a hundred. You go, oh, oh, oh. So what you should do is like the last fifty pages should be blank and let them like freak panic. It should and then, be the blurb. Right, right. I should put the blurb as the ending. Yep. Next but, book. <laughs> the prequel. I'll do it. <laughs> I'm actually writing a sequel to this one. Um, this one, this book ends in like 2005-ish. I don't have actual dates, but in my mind, it's sure. it's mid 2000s. Yeah. Um. So the next book is going to pick up shortly thereafter. Yeah. And you have you told me earlier you have ten ten novels I am, that you pedal. That's what they told me on as, the internet as, that as, I have ten <laughs> titles. That's what I've heard. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I looked at it. and I said, you're kidding me. Ten? <laughs> Did I? And then I kind of look at the titles and I go. I guess so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I know. It's something. Learn something today. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, and you also, um, we'll get back to your books real quickly again. But I yeah, did want to. <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason why we're here. Uh, I do want to say that you do run the, the fright reads every year. It, um, run is a is a word. Yeah. So I did um, I did fright reads uh, last month, and I do say that was one of my favorite mini cons I've ever done. Yeah. Um, so I, I, enjoyed I can it. imagine the logistics of you know saying I want to put a bunch of horror authors together in a room and hope nothing happens. <laughs> so. My favorite story that you as you as a vendor, as an attendee, would have never gotten, only, even only three people of my staff knew. I talked to the uh, Benfield Sports Center, the, uh, the hosting venue, right, and they told me of all of the things that they host, they host wrestling, boxing, sports ball matches, all of roller derby, of all of these events. The only one that's ever required emergency paramedic services is yours. Was my event, <laughs> the safe book festival but that wasn't because somebody got hurt hurt it was because somebody refused to drink water and dehydrated and oh. fell over how do you refuse to drink water when, you dehydrate? Um, when you're when it just happens that's weird um i guess she was busy oh, and she just, didn't, just you know you get wrapped up it. and you don't sure. think of it and no, then all of a sudden you're like hmm i feel a little off and then before you know it you're, yeah, on, you're the floor. on the floor right, right um but we had uh i mean my event staff there's a head of security over there uh, mm. setting up ghostbuster stuff yeah but um yeah, Steve was. I 
we jokingly call him head of security. Like, if something was to happen, I have no idea what the actual response is for him. <laughs> but his guidance is literally call the people that can do something. Yeah. And he was immediately paramedics on the phone, had them uh, put in the right place, got everything going. Um, I was notified. We learned that we need walkies at this tiny event. Um, Isn't that though, like a requirement of the building? No, but we need them now. Oh, I see what you're saying. You, but going I was, forward, I you, was on stage with the uh, the magician. Mm -hmm. He was up there doing his thing, right. and then somebody came up. Um, one of your girls fell on the ground, and now there's paramedics. And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm running the event. What? <laughs> um, but aside from that, um, overall, the general consensus was it was a lot of fun. It's very author friendly because it's not. It, it's not autograph grab. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not the line ride. It's not a celebrity not cash grab. grab. Like we were talking about. Yeah, earlier. it's yeah, not I, a cash con. I it definitely is. enjoyed. Like, I very much enjoyed that. And I did. And I did. You know, for an indie author at my level, I did fantastic that day. I, I left. I sold more books than I had. Uh, you know, there's kind of as an author, um, you budget in your head how many you think you might sell. You know, and and I I shot that by, you know out the water so yeah it was well that, and that's that was the goal and one of the other things that i really loved about the event and it makes you feel good as an event runner i got a i got a personal email from one of the authors uh joyce elaine mm -hmm. um i don't know in relation to where you were i think you were here and she was here she was the one that wrote uh, the gift of death okay I, when I, even when i made the post i was like some people like gifts i don't know if we'd like this one but she's totally check out the book mm -hmm. the gift of death I don't know if I'd want that. I hope she got the return receipt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was like how I how I promoted it. Like right. I just had fun with that it. She thought buzz. it was hilarious. Yeah. But um, but if you didn't notice, like, I'm, and I'm doing it again. Uh, Frightreads.com hosts every single vendor, every single author, and the important celebrity people. Sure. Everybody gets their own level playing field. It doesn't come up and just say like we have Stan Lee and right. the comic book man right. and whatever, whatever, whatever. Right. It's equal building. everybody. Yeah. Like, there's separate sections, of course. Sure, sure. There's there's the uh, super famous celebrity guest section. Mm -hmm. Sorry, we all don't make the cut. Right. But <laughs> you know, if I if I was to get an actor or something, yes, they go in there. But that's not to say that the vendors and the authors don't deserve that that platform to a yeah. degree. So she tells me, um, thank you for the one at least one guaranteed sale because. A patron of the event went onto the website, looked at all the authors and vendors, saw hers, clicked on her her icon, went to her Amazon page, read the preview, and immediately like beelined it to her That's great. the day of the event and bought the book and said, "I found you through the website. I'm so glad you were still here today." Yeah, you can't. You know, there's something to be said about organic sales, where yeah. as the author, you're not. You know, uh, I run a lot of Facebook ads and I run a lot of Amazon ads. So, you know, and I have to pay for each click. Yes, you do. But, um, you know, and while I do get a good return on investment on them, um, there is something to be said about that organic sale yeah. where you didn't really even do anything. It you, just kind of existed. You existed and it sold itself. <laughs> yep. So, um, let's, so we'll wrap up here. We're just going to shift the focus back on you and your books because this is kind of like why we're sitting here. Um, you have 10 books that, you, that, you, that you're told about. <laughs> what is your favorite one? And that is, and I hate this question as an author. So I'm going to ask another author because I want to share the pain of when someone asks me, "What's your favorite book you've ever written?" So, the one I held up. Yes. I think I even introduced it as my favorite book. Um, you may have. I, I kind of tuned out there for a little happens. bit. Just let you know. It happens. It's good to be a. Out. It's good to be a host of a, <laughs> of a show, and you're like, oh, "I'm sorry, what? What, <laughs> what? What were we doing? How did I get here? Who are you people, and what are you doing in my bedroom?" <laughs> Why is this car in my bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's my favorite. Like I like all of my books for different reasons. Like my series Fubar, it's based on my military experience, mm. but it's in a sci-fi sense. Yeah. So it's like all my army buddies. It's my time in the base. It's my disillusionment with the service, sure. with the VA, which is very heavy in book number two, three, and probably four. Yeah, then um, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you know how I feel. <laughs> Um, but it's it's done in a very clever way where you don't know that that's what I'm talking about unless you know. Yes, right. Um, so I it, it has a soft spot for me there because it's just fun. It's a lot of a lot of explosions, boom boom action. Um, so when but, you say when you say like military sci-fi, almost the first thing that comes to mind, and I'm probably completely wrong, is Starship Troopers. You're completely wrong. I love but, being completely wrong. But I just wanted to tell you you're completely wrong. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. Um, it is. Um, at, Every time I tell somebody the description, I tell them, imagine if Starship Troopers and Aliens mixed with Zombieland. Oh, I so, love Zombieland. 
it's all awesome. It's all like very cool, like sci-fi action stuff. A lot of explosions and craziness. A lot of heart is in the story. But those guys are dumber than a bag of rocks sometimes. <laughs> so and what, that's zombie. That's the zombie land side of it. Sure. What? So, uh, say the name one more time in case. Fubar. The, right. That's the name of the series. Yes. Yes. And the name of the book that you held up. So the, the so the, like I said, they all have a soft spot from in, in my heart. Yes. But this guy right here, Memoirs of a Crazed Mind. Memoirs of a Crazed Mind. This one is. Hi. Did you? Oh, okay. Here, it's this book for the camera. There's a person looking at. That book, they won it because it's a good book. <laughs> it is serial killers. You, you into murder? Are you in the murder? This whole thing got derailed, and I love it. This would be an awesome first episode. I'm not editing any of this out. None of this will be edited. I love it. It's like, hi, real people. We're really doing this. There's no second takes. We're just gonna burn right through it. Um, it's it's very tongue in cheek uh, serial killer stuff. So you have um, like it's very. Dexter, American Psycho, like. Mm -hmm. um, that's you know, I just saw American Psycho for the first time this year. What the? Fuck? You can Ow. swear this is this is not a kid-friendly show. So no, I didn't even have the like. It was so <laughs> jarring so, that like, I, I couldn't I had, even finish the word. Just, so my wife, my wife who I've been with since 2004, like it dawned on her like earlier this year that I'd never seen American Psycho. I, she, I, I, so I think this is Ice Nine. The shirt that I'm wearing is Ice Nine Kills. Ice Nine Kills, yeah. Their song that's based on that. I literally picked this up at the concert uh, last week, and I was like, yeah. I need that shirt. Yeah, my wife, like... Um, I'll spend the $500 on that shirt. Yay, she, concert price. Yeah, she basically, like, you know, sat me down on the couch and started it. She's like, we're clearing a schedule for the next two hours because we're and watching this movie. And here's the thing. The movie is still dialed down in comparison to the books. Yeah. But, look, that book is so fucked up. Yeah. Oh, my God. But that's that's part of the loose inspiration. And... Are you comfy? Huh? Oh, this is this is wonderful. It's delightful. I, I recommend everybody own a DeLorean. All right, so um, we're in the middle of a of a, uh, of, of taping a show. Hi, this so is the Charm got, City we Ghostbusters. Have, we have somebody uh, the video photo bombing us behind. We have the Charm City Ghostbusters. You should check them out. I'm one of them. <laughs> um, but to to wrap up the the book synopsis, it's basically you're following a serial killer telling you his life adventure starting from childhood. So you get that tongue in cheek of just like very nonchalantly telling you like yeah so yeah, anyway I, kill I murdered this person it's fine but it's it's then, then in a way cream. that everything everything that normal people do there's there's life there's jobs marriage relationships right. dating work everything that you do buying an apartment or a house all the normal things and murder right. all the normal things that people do so it's very interesting because um, while you and I have known each other I think over a year now and we've worked Since, kind of uh, side by side right, right. yeah so you know, and, and but um, you know we haven't had really the opportunity to talk uh, about our books to each other. But my my Moonlight City Drive trilogy is about a family man who has a job. He's got a loving wife, a kid that he adores. But at night, um, when his wife thinks he's working the night shift, he's killing people. Oh, he's working the night shift. <laughs> yeah, he's working the night shift. So, but he, <laughs> but everything about him is 100 percent normal. Yeah. Um, and this is why he, you know, it, it, and I think that's why it. It unner unnerves people because you go, my God, my next door neighbor. Do you remember the movie Anybody The Burbs? Could be a killer. Oh yeah, no, right? it's The Burbs. Yeah. So it, like, but the paranoia that that, that they were doing so, something. You my, know. my favorite scene of The Burbs, and it's not anything to do with the the creepy neighbor. It was when he got his two idiot neighbor buddies. Yeah. And they were on the walkie going, all right, move in, over. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you don't have to. <laughs> Every time. Because yeah. <laughs> I do that, and I guarantee you, it fright reads next year. I'm going to be doing that on the walkies. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, but, well, yeah, that's that's what it is. It's very tongue-in-cheek. You follow him on all of his adventures through life. My mom bo bothered me so much that I needed more book. Your mom? She's, yeah, my mom yeah. was just like, I need more book. And I was like, Mom, I have nothing. That I do it ended. It's it's very right, it's, it's a very good ending. Sure. It's like, ah, that's it. Yeah. And you're... Well, you might not be okay with the ending, but it's an ending, and it's it's one that you can consider to be wrapping it up. It took me two and a half years, but I'm writing the sequel. Uh, you're going to make your mom happy. And I'm, you're going to dedicate to her? I gotta get, dedicate to mom. Dedicated to mom who wouldn't stop bugging the <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> who wanted more killings. <laughs> so here, hope you're happy, mom. That's what it will say. I hope you're happy. <laughs> hope you're happy now. Hope you're happy. <laughs> Love your son. <laughs> Love, son. <laughs>
All right. Well, I appreciate you sitting in the car. Yeah, yeah. It was and, awesome. Uh, I was wanting to sit in here anyway. See, so this is a good excuse. We killed two birds with one stone. And I get to look at all the autographs of all the, the fancy people that yeah, uh, you've it's, gotten it's, it's only Christopher Lloyd. Doesn't that matter. That's all him. So I said That's, all the fancy that, people. Yeah, him and I guess his, uh, yeah, he just kept writing. So. What are you going to do? You're going to tell him to stop? You tell Doc to stop? No. Absolutely not. No. In fact, I was surprised he signed his name and Do as Doc Brown. Like, he, I got the, so his character. So most celebrities do that. Yeah. Um, if like, you notice, they're different. Like, the handwriting, he actually changes his Doc well, Brown signature. Well, he changes signature. it to the Doc Brown signature when he handwrote Morty the... Uh, Mor yeah, the letter. Morty. Morty. <laughs> Morty. When Rick wrote Morty, Morty the letter. M Morty, you, you got to get in the DeLorean, <laughs> Morty. Oh, I don't know, Rick, man. Oh, jeez. Um... Yeah, when he uh, when he wrote uh, Marty, um, that's the that's very similar to the handwriting. It was very yeah. accentuated. Right. right. Um, so it's one of those little nice little deep cuts that he remembers how he signed the letter. Yeah. Good um, but celebrities do that. Like when when we were here at uh, at StellarCon last year, um, Jim Cummings was the guest of honor, and Winnie the Pooh signed my Tigger movie as Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. Oh, that's And cool. they were distinctly different. Different. And I was like, ah, oh, bless him. Yes, what a yes. what a saint. So yeah, I'm hoping nice. that uh like like Kari Payton and the gang that are here. If I have him sign something with Cyborg and King Ezekiel, mm -hmm. that we get a little bit of both, yeah. and that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. Because then yeah. it's like, it's not the actor signing it, it's the character signing it. The character it. played by that actor. Yeah, it, cool. it brings you into that world, even though you're a grown adult and you know that that's not really what they what? do. Who cares? Look, if Dan Aykroyd signs something as Ray Stance, it's, that's fucking Ray Stance. Right. I, I accept no other. Right. Um, the only other exception that I will take is uh, Frank Welker. Okay, because yeah. he's also Ray right. Stance, which is surprisingly right there on in, on the TV there. <laughs> yeah, um, that'll be distracting all day. I'll tell you that. Because that was distracting at Fright Reads. I had to stop and watch at least once an episode, and I was like, "Oh, the Boogeyman!" Well, at my table when it opens, I will be playing the Back to the Future cartoon on my laptop, which people okay. didn't even know existed. Okay, and I have people stop and be like, "What?" But is it as good as the real Ghostbusters? No. And this no. is where we have a fight in the DeLorean. No, no, no. This is, I agree with you. <laughs> But this is where the fight starts. The right. Yeah. What was what's the superior cartoon? Right. And that'll be the next episode. It'll just be the brawl in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, just let's fight. Like Ghostbusters taking off elbow pads. Let's go. Let's dance. I'm throwing flex capacitors at people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it and thank you. And um, yeah. I hopefully people check out uh, either Memories of a Crazed Mind or the Fubar series or any of your books. Or the new one with me and Tim. Yeah. Tim. Brand new. October first. Tim lives twelve minutes from here and is not here. He's not here. It's a good, um, it's a good plug <laughs> for um, your co-author. But uh, we wrote it. It's very fun. It's we wrote separate chapters. Yeah, that's what very you told unique. Me. Yeah, um, definitely check it out. There's probably a free sample or something to read on the Amazon, or Tim has it on his mailing list. I don't know. So, do you have a? Uh, we'll end it with a website or anything you got that people can rewind and watch four times to understand what you actually said. Do you have, uh, like, do you have a .com for you? Uh, or? Yeah, I have. Uh, so a couple of the .coms. Uh, Facebook and Instagram, I have. Uh, just look up Harry Carpenter, author. Um, Twitter, maybe, if it's still there. Yeah, who knows? Um, that's why I didn't even include that. I was like, maybe Twitter, yeah. if it's there. Um, you can go to hcarpenterwriter.com. Or for that super fun, awesome book festival, frightreads.com. Yes, that was... And Fright Reads Book Fest on all the socials that exist still. Yeah. We'll do that again next year. That was, that Dude, was good. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Yeah. I was looking forward to it so hard that I started planning the 2nd of October. Yeah. Well, that's when you know... Like, the evening of. I was yeah. like, I need to do more. Well, that's when you know it was a success. If you didn't leave going, this was a waste of time, this was a piece of crap. But if oh, you, I if always you, do. If, yeah, but if, but, if, <laughs> but, if, but if your motivation is, we're doing this again, then you did something right. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. And it's good times. Take care, everyone. Bye, everybody. Goodbye, Internet. <laughs>